Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Play artist, right on dynamite. <laughs> Playing artist, right on dynamite. It's a- MP3 music search, only on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. Sync, say the word. So I really like having a lot of fonts in my system and being able to manipulate what I'm doing in my designs a lot of times. But sometimes that can be a little bit tough. Well, there's a new product basically called Type DNA from a company called Type DNA. And Darren's here to tell us a little bit about what that is. So what is a font plugin? Hi, we're, um, we're a plugin for Adobe CS Suite. Um, as you just said, we, uh, we make it easy to work with fonts uh, in, the, in the creative process. So one of the things that we do is uh, when you install the software on your machine, we analyze the characteristics of the fonts on your machine, and then we package uh, a series of tools that make it easier for you to work with those fonts. So is this like if I have an existing font in my design, does it look at the pixels? Does it actually look at the fonts? What's it doing for this analysis of the fonts? What it's doing is it's, it's open up your entire font library so you have access directly to your, uh, your font library. So you, you can quickly access it. You can see the types of your fonts you have, the look and style of them as, as you're working with the tool? Exactly. It, uh, the easiest way to, uh, is probably to show you how it, how it works, and then you'll get to see uh, exactly what it does. OK. Um, one, of the, one of the first things we do, which is, is pretty simple, is that we actually add a search feature into, um, into Photoshop InDesign Illustrator. So if I'm looking for a font by name, then I just type in a couple of letters and I see. In this, in this example, I've just searched for Garamond and I've now got Garamond Pro Bold there. But then we have some more sophisticated features. Um, for example, we have one called Similarity. So if I like Garamond Pro, then I can say, show me other ones like it. So now it looks at the characteristics of Garamond and quickly shows me fonts that are of a similar kind, look from its characteristics. And then I can um, fine tune those results by taking uh, any one of these filters. We have weight, width, italic angle, and optical size. So here I'll show you, I want something like Garamond that's a uh, lighter weight. So there you go, I've got a nice selection of fonts. And when I want to use a font, I just simply double click it, fires it into the document as a, as a working layer. And then I can change font as I, as I please. So is it actually creating the, a full layer, adding the fonts in, and letting me change it on the fly by just exactly. double-clicking? Exactly, that's what it's doing. Um, and I can go in and head lock, um, change the text, and then go back in and do more fine-tuning to, to change the font. Um, there's another tool that we have. So in this example here, I've actually taken a font and made it as a headline. So I've used this, uh, this font here, and I can say, ask a type DNA plugged in solution to tell me which um, fonts work well with that as, uh, as body fonts. So here it's now made a suggestion of, um, of body fonts and again I can use my filters to say that I want something maybe heavier or lighter or uh, if it's italic or uh, steeper. Um, and then you just create a new font layer and it fires out another font here which is a little bit big for a font, uh, for a body font. So I just shrink that down. And one of the things we've tried to do is make it as seamless as possible to jump in and out of um, the existing interface for uh, the Adobe CS products and complement rather than replacing what, what uh, Photoshop, etc. are doing. Now, as you're doing this, can you save your font-like selections as design types, or is it just part of the document itself? Um, what we're, at the moment, we, are, um, we have a, a feature called uh, shortlisting, and um, you, we're working at the moment to actually allow you to save it per document so that it's uh, embedded in the PSD. So then you can actually have little sets of fonts per uh, working document. But that's something that's not actually available in this, this version at the moment. Cool. Well, this is, this is really cool technology. I mean, it makes it selection of your fonts and adding it much easier, it looks really? like, in the overall design. It does. And um, one of the biggest problems facing the designer is if you've got many thousands of fonts, it's knowing where to start in the creative process. So we have this tool we call Smart Choice. So if I click this button, what it does is it analyzes all the fonts I have, and then it finds a cross selection of different types of fonts. So I then can use my filters to go into these, and then when I find something I like, so let's, uh, I'm going to say, find me something italic. And what that will do is it will show me some, um, some script fonts. I can use a similarity function to then find all the other script fonts I have, which are then ready to use directly in my document and just swap them out. Very nice. Well, this is a great looking design tool, and I think it would really help a lot of designers work with fonts in a more effective way. Well, thanks for letting us take a look at your type DNA technology. I have one more thing. Okay. Just uh, if you break away the plugin like that, you can uh, expand it out, and you can change to what we, we call um, card view. 
and this is um, a more of a card based way or a visual way of going through the font so you can sit and watch them go by and then um, change them as you, you see something you like just by uh, double clicking. Very nice, very nice. Well, very cool technology. Thanks for uh, taking the time to come and see us. Well, this is Kenji Kato for MacBrick, and I hope you've enjoyed a look at Type DNA.